As Abby Schmidt heads off the floor, gets a big bear hug from her coach Drew Johnson. And judging from that interaction there, that could be the final time you'll see her in Bethel black and maroon. As a child, you would wait and watch from far away. But you always knew that you'd be the one that would quietly all play. And you, you'd lay awake at night and scream. Pressure's down two with 2.2 left. And the pressures get up a great shot here. Look for Schmidt. Schmidt. Schmidt puts up the shot. And, and one! And one! And one! Shot is up. Shot yeah. is good! As a what block. a great play by the pressures. Ladies and gentlemen, you just witnessed the classic. Consistent. The ultimate professional. Hard worker. Dedicated. Humble. The beast. Selfless. She's the goat. Humble. She's always, you know, trying to make us the best players we can be. Determined. Relentless. Hard working. Proactive. A leader and a role model. Every time we play together, Abby just picks me up. She has that energy to it that she can come and give me a high five and she picks me up every time. Like seeing how hard working and dedicated she is, like it makes me want to go harder. And Abby kind of took me under her wing and so in the last three years I've been um, practicing against her, playing with her and really learning a lot from her and I definitely would not be the player I am today or the person I am today without her. 
at the K-Dub game. After they won, I ran out on the court and she kind of met me at half court and she was just screaming at me and I was screaming and I thought she was gonna talk, like tackle me, but that I will never forget. One moment that I'll never forget is us having a little sleepover in the hotel before the St. Mary game. I had the honor to braid Abby's hair before every game. Got the, <laughs> had to do it all. She got the double-double because of her hair. My favorite memory with Abby is having inside jokes. Um, our quote is the thresher way. I'm gonna leave it at that because Abby and the team are the only things that know what that means. My favorite memory of Abby is uh, over Christmas break last year, we spent all Christmas break doing puzzles in the mod. My favorite moment with Abby would be messing with her in practice. Recently, she's had a bunch of bruises on her arms. She's been getting really beat up and she gets really upset with me because I go around and poke them. We kind of have a little tradition of every like Saturday before a home or away game, we would go to Mojo's after shoot around and we'd always get like, um, I would always get a smoothie, she would always get her weird coffee that I don't really like, and then we'd always get breakfast burritos. During the Friends game, she got an N1 and I was able to point to her at the bench and she pointed at me back. Yeah, I mean, when we walked in the door, um, Abby would tell you that uh, she had a conversation with her parents, like, will I get a chance to play? And, uh, you know, we, we started off the season really hot. We, we, finished, we started 4-2 and, and, and had a chance to make a, a, a really good push in a couple of the classics we were in. Um, Abby had a game against Bellevue um, early in her freshman year where she had 20-something points and, and 15 rebounds or so. Um, and at that point, we kind of knew Abby was going to be here to stay and was going to be a great player. And, and she just kept getting better and better as a freshman. The one thing that I will say about her is that she's always had a, a relentless work ethic and, and the ability to just go rebound every basketball. That was huge from, from the time she walked in the door. Yeah, I think even as a freshman, um, Abby had the ability to be the player that people looked at and said, that's the standard. Um, that's how hard you work. That's the kind of person we want to be. That's the kind of um, uh, attitude we're going to have in practice and in games every day. And, and for four years, she's been that kind of a player. Um, each year, she's developed a little bit more into that leadership role. But even as a freshman, she was, she was a player that people looked up to. You know, even with the COVID stuff we've been going through, um, she's been a, a positive force on our team. And I think it's been easy this year um, to forget all the, the struggles and hardships that our players go through with, uh, you know, classes being on and off or in person or virtual. You know, that's all off the court stuff, let alone is the game going to be on? Is the game going to be canceled? You know, who are you going to play? And, and it's been quick turnarounds at times. Um, you know, her, her success as an individual has not wavered from that. And, um, you know, I'm proud of her for that. And, and we're going to miss that kind of a, a relentless attitude. Um, and, and we'll need somebody else to kind of be the next Abby Schmidt. And, and uh, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard in the, in the uh, statistical categories. It's going to be hard in the locker room. Um, she's, she's set a really high bar for what it means to be a, a Thresher women's basketball player. One of my favorite memories with Abby Schmidt is when uh, when she comes into work the first time. You know, uh, I didn't know her at all, and I needed a, I needed a person to be my office assistant. I was the men's basketball coach and AD at the same time. I needed a good worker, and two people applied for the job. So obviously, nobody really wanted to work for me to begin with, which I can't blame them. And Abby probably regret, regretted it for quite a long time then too. But she came in. I thought she was ready to take the job, and so I put her to work right away. She comes to tell me about a year later, maybe six months later, um, that she actually came in just to interview and was deciding between working here or working at the rec department, and I simply just gave her no choice. Didn't know her at all. She was scared to death. I put her to work folding envelopes and uh, putting out mass mailers from the very beginning. She probably hated the job for a long period of time, but uh, now she wants to make a career path out of it. So the, the conversation that Abby Schmidt and I had after the Bethany women's uh, quarterfinal game in which we lost at home, it's kind of a heartbreaking loss. Abby didn't play very well that night, she knew that, and we ended up you know, in the gym afterwards and we probably talked for an hour that night. Uh, it was just unbelievable the passion that she had towards not just frustrated with a loss, but frustrated because she wanted to change Bethel Athletics and she wanted to be somebody that nobody really thought that Bethel Athletics could be or even that she could be, an average player out of high school that turns into an All-American here at Bethel College. And, you know, many people will be frustrated after loss. Very few people will do something about it. For the next two years of her career, everything that she has done, I'm not sure it's in direct reflection of that loss, 
but everything that she has done has implemented her frustration that night to the where she doesn't want to feel that agony again and couldn't respect her more for that. On the flip side, I had the opportunity to interact with Abby in many different fun settings. Um, and probably the first one would be is uh, when she had to overtake the athletic department one time uh, on Fall Fest football game day when I had to interact with an alumnus football interaction. I came back into the office and I said, Abby, are we good to go? Everything good to go? And she looks at me like just this pure agony on her face. She's like, this has been awful. And I, and I said, well, you know, well, I thought you were mature enough, I thought you could handle this. She's like, I almost died and I wrecked the gator and somebody hit me. Um, and um, the gator didn't work for quite a while. We finally got it fixed, but nonetheless, uh, just Abby and her uh, uh, unbelievable ability to want to always be perfect and um, at the same time being able to get out of that as well and just knowing that life is not going to be perfect and that she can't always control it. So uh, some good times with Abby Schmidt, that is for sure. I think I'll look back on my time at Bethel um, as a lot of different things. Um, it's been an incredible four years. I don't think that I imagined when I stepped on the floor here four years ago that this is where we would have ended up. Um, I don't think I could have wrote it any better way though. Success is a little bit sweeter when you experience the bottom too. Um, and it's just been an amazing experience. All these people that I've shared it with, all the people I've got to know, um, has just been a really cool, cool deal and I'm just so lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, I hope people remember um just the joy that she plays basketball with um, you know it, it's easy to remember the points or the rebounds or the you know a couple game-winning shots and a couple like really big performances but what I hope people remember is, is just how much fun Abby Schmidt has playing the game of basketball and and uh, if, if we all live our life with that much joy and that much passion uh, we'll all be really successful and, and I hope that's what people remember. I hope to also just remember the passion that we brought um, as a team and just the joy that we showed when we played. Um, mo one of my most famous memories is just the atmosphere here and the experience that we've created. And so I hope they'll remember that. And I know it hasn't always been that way. And so I think it's really special to cherish that as well.